believe me, today we've been through some of the real stuff. The fellas are asleep now. They're half dead with exhaustion. They're filthy with sweat and dirt. But take my word for it, Mom. They're grand soldiers, every one of them. There's Hank over there, still fighting in his sleep. I'll never forget how he tackled that machine gun nest on Hill 250. And late this afternoon, when we stormed this village, it was Tony who led the others, blazing his way through the streets like a one-man army. And I'll never forget watching Bill creep up on that sniper. They're soldiers, Mom. Yesterday, they were kids, but tonight, they're soldiers. They've come through. They're fighters. They didn't give up. And I know why. Tomorrow, they'll go on. Because each one of them knows that thousands of miles away, back home, there's a good soldier standing behind every one of us fighting out here. I know, Mom, you're fighting with me. I'm writing tonight to tell you that I'm as proud of you as you'll ever be of me. Ever since I got your last letter, I've been thinking of your end of the war, thinking of you rolling those bandages, helping to build up the blood bank, working over at the nursery twice a week, keeping the kids out of mischief while their folks are helping to win this war. And even when it's late at night, I know how you hate to let go of a day. Yeah, it's just one more little job before I go to bed, patching, darning, making over. I'm glad you haven't turned the old house into just a headquarters. I'm glad you're keeping it our home, the way it was. That's the way I feel about it out here. But it's also part of a woman's job, keeping up the home, the homes we're fighting for that someday we want to come back to. And you can tell those sisters of mine that I'm cheering for them, too. Tell Mary I think of her every time I see one of our planes going over. Tell Ann she's doing as good a job as any man in a tank out there on the farm. Tell every woman in our town, from one soldier to another, that I'm proud of them all. Say hello to Mrs. Zabinski. Tell her I think she's a good soldier, too. Say hello to Mrs. Carney, who organized the canteen down at the station. And Mrs. Gallagher, who's working on the railroad. And Helen Lacey, too, rushing those telegrams. <laughs> you know, we always said Helen would get there. But you've just got to give her time. Yes, you're all good soldiers, Mom. We know how you're going without things so as to buy just one more war stamp or one more bond. I know what a kick you used to get out of new clothes. You're not fooling me now when you say you like your old things best. And you're not fooling me when you make exceptions for some of the other women in our town. There shouldn't be any exceptions. Just what does Mrs. Exception mean when she tells you she had to give up her Red Cross work because it didn't leave her time enough to get her hair done each week? And what does this other Mrs. Exception mean when she says she can't help at the canteen because they need her at the same time at a bridge party? And what does Miss Exception mean when she says she can't do a war job because they're all so monotonous and dirty? And what does this Mrs. Exception mean by complaining about high prices and then boasting of all the stuff she bought on the black market? These aren't exceptions, Mom. They're only slackers. Remember, there aren't any exceptions out here, Mom. There can't be. Don't those women realize there can't be exceptions anywhere? We took a village today. The people cheered. They'd lived for three years under the dictators. For three years, they'd watched the skies with fear in England, in Russia, in Czechoslovakia, Poland, France, and Greece. In China, in all these countries, this has been going on so long, it's called normalcy. It could be our town. This is our town, our people in hand. If there were enough exceptions. Yes, this could be the fear of your days and nights too, Mrs. Exception. Always watching the skies with dread. If there are enough exceptions, it might still happen to you. It's the same wherever it happens, no matter where you are. When women have to crawl out of the dirt and the dust of their wrecked homes, they have the same black despair. It could happen to you, Mrs. Exception, and this is what it would be like. This was your home, your address, 252 State Street. And hunger is always the same, in any stomach, in any language. One egg a month and standing in line to get it. You could be in line too, Mrs. Exception, 
moving forward only a few steps each hour for this. In England, the women were given jobs they never asked for, the job of shoveling up their own homes. In Russia, the invaders created a cruel task for the people, and they made no distinction in sex. And the women of Greece wonder if they'll ever stand up straight again. It could be you, Miss Exception, and it could be Maple Avenue in front of your house, and the job is monotonous and dirty. After all these years, there are still tears to be shed. What would it be like if it happened to us? What would it be like if it happened to you, Mrs. Exception? Yes, this is it. Here's how we'd have to leave our town. First, sending to safety the children who were left as they sent them away from their homes in London. And in Russia, this is how they tried to get away from the storm of war which came closer every hour. It wouldn't be different even if it were our own Highway 32 running out north by Johnson's Corners. In China, they've walked this road for years. This isn't China, but we soon learn that the road is just as hard and hot and steep. This isn't China, but we bring the same things with us. Books from the library for the children someday when they're school again and the precious instruments of science because someday, sometime, perhaps we can resume the struggle against pain and disease and all the catastrophes of ignorance. This might be true. It will be true if there are enough exceptions. Tell them, Mom, there are no exceptions here. There can't be exceptions anywhere. There's too much ahead. We'll be going on tomorrow morning, Mom. Hank, Bill, Tony, all of us, with no exception. March behind us, Mom, and Mrs. Zabinski, and Mrs. Gallagher, and all of you. It's a big war. There's a place for everybody. We need you. March with us. Keep in step. Remember, you're in it. We're all in it, with no exception. Thank you.